Sculptor and artist Constantine Demopoulos is gracing this city with a project he calls the Blue Trees Project. It's a work that sends a message to the world and a work that is bold, intriguing, and delightful. Constantine was born in Egypt, spent a lot of time in New Zealand, and now lives in Melbourne, Australia. It is my pleasure to welcome Constantine Demopoulos to Studio 4 to tell us more. Okay. Thank nice you very to much. meet you. Nice it to sounds you. pretty Greek to me, that name. It, d it certainly is. Uh, uh, my ancestry come from uh, Greece, although they mm -hmm. moved to Egypt uh, after all these, uh, around that area is quite a volatile area, so sure. my, my parents kind of moved there. They were tailors, and my father was a tailor, and my grandfather was a tailor, and my mother was a tailor. Uh, but after, again, in Egypt, and uh, the um, government changed, uh, we, yes. we ba basically um, had to leave because there was mm -hmm. no work. And, so and as you know, the government is still I know, changing I know. in and Egypt. I, I won't go into the politics of that <laughs> no. at the moment. But, but art and politics, there Absolutely. is a link. There's no question about it. And yes. You can make a, a big statement about what's going on in the world by your creativity, by using your creativity. Absolutely. I, and I, as I said, I don't think it's necessarily just artists. I think uh, well, what I'm hoping with the project is we're all able to change our environment. We all mm -hmm. have that potential to change our environment. Now, because I'm an artist, I use the technique of an artist to, ch sure. to change it. If I was a dentist, I might use mm -hmm. a different technique. But uh, <laughs> I was just saying, I might bite people, I don't know. Right. Uh, but, no, I'm uh, happier uh, you're an uh, artist, uh, believe me. That's right. So I guess in many respects, uh, it's all about really the blue trees. It's about ideas. And our mm -hmm. ideas can actually change people's perception of their environment and how they see it. And mm -hmm. uh, I think there's a imbalance here. We have urban communities, urban forests, and people are very passionate about their trees. They don't want them hurt. Mm -hmm. they do. and yet or on the cut other, down. Or cut down. And yet there's this old forest, which is I guess what mm -hmm. the Blue Project is about, which just is out, out of sight. And so it's slowly, trees don't make a noise when they die. They just, they just mm -hmm. disappear. And I said to people, if, if it was what we see in the images of places like Japan at the moment where that catastrophe is right in front of our faces, we try to say, how can we help? What can we do to do it? But the thing with the forest is you don't see that. It just disappears slowly. Mm -hmm. And in that slowness, uh, we, we don't realize how much the trees really, um, in the end, uh, determine if we're going to be here, you know, whether anyone's going to be here again. It's the, they are the lungs of the planet. Sure, the lungs of the planet, and yeah. also the uh, whether it's tropical yeah, or coastal here, uh, an interior forest, and as you know, little skinny trees don't get the same reverence absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as the giant cedars yeah, yeah. and the Sitka spruce and, and the beautiful virgin trees absolutely. and the old growth forest and all of that. But that said, when we're not watching, what is going on in a South America with Absolutely. the devastation of the forests yeah. is uh, startling yeah. and uncanny, really. Well, that's exactly it. And I think sooner or later, you have to draw a line. You have to kind of, you're gonna, mm -hmm. we, we don't need any more pulp to, to use for toilet paper. You know, we've, you know, we've <laughs> we got enough. We, we, we need something, but maybe, maybe we can kind of work out. If we've, we've yes. gone to the moon, we can actually, and I guess what I'm saying is I don't, I don't have the answers to that. And I, right. I understand that people have to make a living out of forestry. Of course. And, I, and, and, and it's an honorable living done right. Absolutely, absolutely. And there's, there's uh, sustainable forestry where you plant it like, like, you, like mm -hmm. uh, farming. Uh, but what I'm talking about is the old forest, these three, four hundred year old trees that have really have, you know, have been here when your ancestors came to Canada. Yes. Uh, and I think the aboriginals, both here and in Australia, really are very sensitive to the land. When mm -hmm. the land is sick, they tend to be sick. And mm -hmm. you know, you have a huge thing. I think we've lost that connection as Europeans I've, well, and, and Canadians sure. and, and Australians. We've actually lost that connection to the land. Um, we care about our, and, and uh, you know, if anyone does anything to our street, terrible. But we don't see the bigger problem. We don't see that if, if these trees go, mm -hmm. then this planet is gone. Mm -hmm. They basically are what, what keeps the right. air going here. Sure, and it's a tough call sometimes because if that tree is worth $50,000 and you pull it Absolutely. out and make a lot of cedar yeah, tables, yeah, yeah. it's a difficult call, but there is a reverence for a tree that we can allow to happen. Certainly in this province, yeah. we're getting way better at it. Yeah, yes, absolutely. I, I've worked with some old loggers and uh, they'll talk, t talk to you. These are rough, tough Absolutely. fallers yeah, yeah. who will say, when you're in the woods, when you're in a virgin yeah. forest, an old growth forest, especially in British Columbia, you will feel the presence of, well, an elemental, Absolute. a spirit, Absolutely. a reverence. Yeah, yeah. 
and I'm sure that you've been inspired by that. So why blue? Well, I guess because in the end there are no blue trees. Blue trees don't exist. You noticed. Uh, and, so, <laughs> and so I guess what I, I love the, uh, like yesterday we were sitting there and the little child was holding his dad looked at him and said, Dad, blue tree, a blue tree. And his father, of course, said, no, 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 come on, let's go. <laughs> yeah. uh, but the child had that fascination that, he, you know, there, was a, there is such a thing as blue trees. And I said to people, well, what, I guess what we're creating is a surreal environment. It doesn't really exist. Mm -hmm. But one day, that surreal environment may come true. I, I, part of the idea of uh, was, uh, as well as um, Joni Mitchell's song, you know, the, yes. yellow, the big yellow taxi, you know, where they cut down the trees yes. and put them in a tree museum. Well, about part, the parking lot. The parking lot. Well, actually, I, in Melbourne, I went to the Botanical Gardens, which is a museum mm, yes. of, uh, of, of sorts, and inside they introduced me to the seeds of trees that now do not exist out in the wild. They, mm. they hold the seeds. So in very mm. respects, I paid, although I was invited, so right. I didn't, to go to a museum to see the tree. So she was quite, um, quite uh, she, she was actually well ahead of her time to actually work out that one day there will be tree museums where you go visit these trees mm -hmm. that no longer can exist. Sure. So that was another idea. That, mm -hmm. uh, well, what is the blue? Is it a paint? Is it no, a it isn't a paint. And I have to stress that absolutely, that we would never, well, I would never uh, use a paint. It's actually just a, as, as most people saw me yesterday, I was actually covered with it, you know. And I, and <laughs> when front, you installed, uh, well, uh, uh, where did you install yesterday? Uh, we were in Port Moody. In Port Moody. Yeah. And I actually, I show people by, in fact, uh, every so often I, I take a pit and I put it in my mouth just to show them and I can actually drink <laughs> it. And right. it wouldn't, it wouldn't, so it's a very water-based, uh, and actually, when it's wet, it actually is quite a deep blue, but when it's, uh, when it's dry, it becomes this incredible, intense ultramarine. And it's the same pigment that really Michelangelo used for the, for the, really? for the Sistine Chapel. It's when all he painted of the, the ceiling. The, it's the, exactly the same uh, colour. It's, uh, it's just the powder and water. Right. And we've got a little bit of pine oil on it yes. uh, to actually bind it so it doesn't come off too easily. But as we were working in Richmond, I mean, it was pouring with rain, and we it just was coming off as we were pouring. So we had to go back the next day and mm -hmm. retouch it back. So yes, so yeah. yeah. And are the trees a, a specific type of tree? Does it matter? No, it doesn't matter at all. In fact, the whole idea was, and well, it still is, that we actually take this all the way down to the Amazon or to the to to mm. and actually colour these trees. It's a, it's the colour is also nature uses it as a means to say, look, you know. The, do not touch me. I'm sure. dangerous. Or like a, like a frog, you know, has mm -hmm. a, you know a particular colour of fish right. to say, you know, don't eat me. I'm dangerous. And I guess the idea for me too was, I saw in the early 70s the um, uh, I, I, right here when they went up to stop the the seal culling and yes. the activists actually sprayed the pups, the white pups, with blue paint mm -hmm. on the back. So mm -hmm. what it made was the the actual fur was then. Um, you know, n yeah, of no use Exactly, at all. and it could have been the Red Tree Project, but it's the Blue Tree Project, but you have done some red work, so yeah. we'll come back and talk more about that.